सभा की कार्यवाही सोमवार दिनांक 6 फरवरी 2023 को प्रातः 11 बजे तक स्थगित की जाती है। On the show, the opposition stalls parliamentary proceedings on the second day on Friday as the Adani matter refuses to die down. Also, find out why India is unhappy with the World Bank's intervention in the Indus Water Treaty. China and India both are vying for the Mongla port in Bangladesh. We tell you why that port is so significant. Find out why Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy chose Vishakhapatnam as the new capital. A journey of confluence of masses. Shaligram Stone has made its way to Ayodhya all the way from Nepal. We tell you why the faithfuls made a beeline as the stone crisscrossed the country. And bend it like Bill. Watch the world's fourth richest man, Bill Gates, making rotis in a viral video. This and more, a comprehensive view of India. Top Angle starts right here, right now. The opposition seems to be unrelenting on the Adani issue. Both houses of the parliament were adjourned till Monday following acrimony by the opposition benches. Sloganeering was witnessed in both the houses of the parliament with opposition sticking to the demand for a joint parliamentary probe in the Adani case. Earlier, 16 parties had attended the opposition meeting convened by Congress President Malik Arjun Kharge. They have been demanding a discussion on the Hindenburg report, following which a free fall was witnessed in the Adani stocks. On to the Indus Water Treaty now. Pakistan wants international intervention in the treaty signed between both the nations and brokered by the World Bank. India says the World Bank is not in a position to interpret the treaty. Clearly, unhappy with the World Bank's decision to appoint a court of arbitration and a neutral expert, India has questioned the decision. India, particularly now, is disappointed over the appointment of the court of arbitration. Also, it is not happy with some of the provisions of the treaty and want modification over disputes related to Kishanganga and the Rattle hydroelectric projects. India had sent a notice to Pakistan seeking a review and modification of the 62-year-old treaty. The modification notice provides Pakistan an opportunity to enter into the intergovernmental negotiations within 90 days to rectify the material breach of the treaty. Signed between India and Pakistan on the 19th of September in the year 1960, the Indus Water Treaty is one of the most liberal water sharing pacts in the world. So what exactly is the Indus Water Treaty? It is a pact of six rivers, which was signed by Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and Pakistan President Ayub Khan in the year 1960. The three eastern rivers of Ravi, Bias and Satluj and their tributaries and the three western rivers of Indus, Jhelum and Chenab and their tributaries are part of it. The treaty allocates the waters of the eastern rivers to India. Pakistan, on the other hand, gets about 80% of the share of the western rivers except for certain consumptive use by India. The treaty gives Pakistan more than four times the water available to India. Now, in 1947, the line of partition also cut the Indus River system into two parts. India and Pakistan both have been dependent on the water for irrigation. And despite India's most liberal approach, Pakistan has an objection to India's hydroelectric projects. Moving on. Arch rivals India and China have both stepped forward to invest in the development of Bangladesh's second largest port, Mongla port. China's interest lies in it being the gateway into the Indian Ocean. Beijing plans to control the Indian Ocean region and expand its power through developing ports in South Asian countries, something that India needs to be wary about. In its biggest foreign credit line to date, Xi Jinping signed loans worth over $24 billion to Bangladesh during his October 2016 Dhaka visit. This was the first trip by a Chinese president to Bangladesh in about 30 years. Now, the investments were aimed at boosting China's involvement in infrastructure projects, including the building of a power plant, a seaport and railways. China pledged to fund 27 developmental projects. 
including a 1320 megawatt power plant and expansion and modernization of the Mongla port. All this at a time when India was already pushing its own investments in the country. Now Japan, helped by India, had also offered finance to Bangladesh at a low interest rate to build a port and power complex. Now Xi Jinping's trip came at a time when Prime Minister Narendra Modi was already making efforts to boost ties with its neighboring countries. It was back in 2015 when India and Bangladesh governments decided to upgrade the Mongla under a line of credit from New Delhi. The Mongla Port Authority signed a deal worth $600 million with Aegis India Consulting Engineers in late December. Now Bangladesh needs to be wary of Chinese advances. China has taken the Hambantota port in Sri Lanka and the world knows how it is counterproductive for both Sri Lanka and India. Similarly, the Dragon is operating a port in Pakistan's Gwadar region and now eyeing a port in Bangladesh. Only goes on to expose China's colonizing tactics. Up next, Vishakhapatnam or Vizag, located on the east coast of India, has been chosen as the new capital of Andhra Pradesh by Chief Minister Vyas Jagannath Reddy. Now, this decision comes nine years after Telangana was carved out of Andhra Pradesh and five years after the then Chief Minister N. Chandra Babu Naidu declared that Amravati would be the new capital. In the year 2020, Jagan Mohan government had proposed to have three capital cities, Amravati, Vishakhapatnam and Karnool. Despite the government's attempts to close all gaps in the initial version of the bill, the Andhra Pradesh High Court ruled against the plan of having three capitals. It ordered the government to develop Amravati as the state capital as originally intended. Now with the announcement by the Chief Minister, we tell you why Vishakhapatnam seems to be an ideal choice as the capital city for Andhra Pradesh. Vishakhapatnam is the largest and most populous city in Andhra Pradesh as well as the second largest city on the east coast of India after Chennai. It is home to many beaches, museums and temples. Vishakhapatnam has become a major tourist attraction. With the help of the state government, the city has become a hotbed for tech startups and is home to many large industries. Vishakhapatnam is the only city in India that can lay claim to having two of the nation's largest ports, the Vizag port and the Gangavaram port. The city is situated between the eastern Ghats' mountains and the Bay of Bengal. It is known as the jewel of the east coast as one of the largest port cities in South India. And Vishakhapatnam steel plant is among the top five profit-making public sector units under the Ministry of Steel. Now, these unique factors have made Vishakhapatnam the ideal choice for the new capital of Andhra Pradesh. The city is well-equipped with all the necessary infrastructure and resources to become a major economic hub. And the government hopes that the state capital will be able to bring in more investments, create jobs and further boost the economy. Moving on, the Bharati Janta Party has three things in line for the year 2024 the Ram Temple, New India, and the double engine government. And the state that best reflects this is Uttar Pradesh. The government is giving final touches to the Ram Mandir, which is due for inauguration in January 2024. Two Shaligram stones, one 26 tons and another 14 tons, have reached Ayodhya from Nepal. They have been handed over to the Ayodhya temple body. The stones are going to be used to construct the idols of Lord Ram and Sita and are believed to be 60 million years old and they also claim to remain the same for the next 10 million years. En route to Ayodhya, Hindu devotees in huge numbers flock the streets to have a glimpse of the pious stone, decorated with flower garlands and to take its blessings. Many even travelled from far off places just to have a mere look and offer their prayers. Clearly, emotions ran high with people chanting aloud the names of Lord Ram and Sita. Well, now, Shaligrams are considered sacred, as Hindus consider it a representation of Lord Vishnu. Holding spiritual importance and considered to be centuries old, the boulders were finally handed over to the Ayodhya temple. Meanwhile, the Ram Mandir complex construction is also in full swing. The Shaligrams brought from Nepal will be kept in this under construction complex. Here the idols of Lord Ram and Sita will be carved out from these stones. The Shaligrams were brought in big trucks to Ayodhya via Pokhara in Nepal amid full security. And just like Uttar Pradesh in Bihar, 
Crowds gathered in huge numbers to have a glimpse of the pious stones. Now the stones taken out from Gandaki River in Pokhara were first brought to Janakpur for worshipping and from here it was sent to Ayodhya. In the Hindu mythology, Sita is known as the daughter of King Janak of Nepal. Up next, American businessman and philanthropist Bill Gates turned into a chef. Don't believe us? Then have a look for yourself in this video shared by popular blogger Eaton Burnock. And guess what chef Bill made? The humble Indian bread that we call a roti. This clip is a minute long besides garnering over 2 lakh views in just a few hours. And why not? It's the world's fourth richest man making rotis. Here's a glimpse. Serve that up. It's the last time we think you, you, you cooked. Uh, well, he, if heating soup counts, I, I, I do that regularly. Oh, but okay. I think that counts. If you start with ingredients like this, it has been a long time. <laughs> well, I'm glad to get Chef Bill. Start rolling away. I'm not getting too circular. Yeah, a little more oval. All right. right. Almost as good as yours. Yeah, basically the same thing. <laughs> then over here, this is a traditional Indian tawa right on there, and then this will cook for just about two to three minutes per side. Once it's done cooking, brush it with ghee and enjoy. Mm. Mm. Pretty good. Delicious. Is it Chef Bill approved? Well, on that note, it's the end of this edition of Top Angle. Do check out incisive news analysis and cutting-edge documentaries streaming only on News9+. Thanks for watching.